Hi, it's Ron Moore here, making your artwork your therapy. Uh, I think that one of the hardest things to do is manage your emotions. Uh, and I think a lot of people, and um, they suppress and store these emotions, uh, and then they react publicly and they push people, um, customers away, uh, and they just create resistance. Now, the irony in this is I was just doing a live feed video and <laughs> I fucked it up. Uh, and I couldn't get it through and I stopped it. Uh, and then I had a little bit of a meltdown and I'm starting again. Um, so yeah, let's do this take two. All right, so um, you can either repress all of the rejection, criticism, resistance that you get from the world, store it in and have a meltdown, or not store it in and just have an immediate reaction meltdown, or you can put that emotion into your art and your passion uh, and you can leverage it for good. So it's almost like uh, you create um, therapy from your art and your work. Now, I think a lot of people have therapists and coaches and stuff, that's a very popular thing, because we don't have an outlet for our emotions. Uh, and we need an outlet for our emotions because if we store them, then they grow, they create illness, disease, repressed anger, which manifest in things that can really damage you and other people. So um, everything that you're storing in, you know, criticism, rejection, hate, um, you know, like disagreements, the things that are wrong in the world, the things that people wrong you for. I'm sure you have plenty of those every day. Take all that energy, manage your emotions in the moment so you don't react. So you have got to do a certain amount of storing it for a little while. Smile, be graceful, and then put that energy into your work. If you're a musician or a dancer, then you throw that into your work and you just make your work that much better. If you're an artist, you throw that into your art so that your art has emotion and passion and flair. If you're a business owner, you put that into solving the problems for your clients and customers. You know, I'd never used to know how to deal with rejection and all this emotion. And because I was a bit of a suppressor and because I didn't like conflict, I'd store it, store it, store it, store it, store it, store it. And then every six months, I'd have a massive meltdown, full on episode. Thankfully, no one was live feeding me, videoing me, sharing 10 years ago. Because oh, honestly, there'd be all these awful videos on social media, me smashing things in my house. If I'd have messed up a podcast like I just did, they'd have been, right, that's it, stop. I'd have picked up this equipment and I'd have just thrown it against the wall and that would have cost me 300 quid and I'd have felt brilliant for about a second. I used to even talk to things that don't have a heart or a soul. I'd talk to an inanimate object, like they're trying to ruin my life. You fucking record, you're trying to ruin. And it's like, Rob, you are insane. You do need a therapist, but you can't afford one. But then when I could put that into my podcast, my books, my live feeds. So ironically, this is called a Rob's Rant, this episode that will be going live on Wednesday, every, Wednesday, every other Wednesday on my Disruptive Entrepreneur podcast. So like, I get to store all these things that happen in the day, I get to smile and thank people and manage my life, hopefully pretty well. I make mistakes, of course. And then I get to chuck it into my podcast, to shout into this microphone uh, and hopefully give you some valuable lessons along the way and take that and redirect it. You know, it's like those X-Men that have all of those special powers, but those powers also have big downsides. And they've got to learn to master and control and harness and hone that power for good. And I think that's the same with all the shit that happens to you every day and all the shit that you say to yourself. Um, so I would say, have a podcast, write a journal. I would say, you know, make sure you've got a creative outlet. It might be art, it might be creativity. It might be creating, building something, solving your clients' problems, always iterating your products and services. Because then you don't need a therapist and you don't need to spend all that money to lay on a couch. And I want to give you some examples uh, of people who I look up to. So my, my fa one of my favourite bands, that you know, they're not everyone's taste, they're very heavy metal, is Pantera. Now, Phil Anselmo, the lead singer of Pantera, is one angry guy. He, he's just had a hard life and he is angry. And he found a way to shout into a microphone and release that in such a way. And that, that came out in his music. And they are the angriest band in the world. Now, not everyone likes that music, but it, it created a whole movement out of his anger instead of, it probably did from time to time, unleash that into family and friends and partners, but better, much better way to put it. Another example is Fern Cotton, who's got a great podcast called Happy Place. Now, of course, that's a different type of energy, but putting her love and happiness through into the podcast and into the guests 
and reaching you know hundreds of thousands of people is a great way to hone your art your therapy um, and of course you know to get to a happy place you have to go through all sorts of difficult challenges and decisions along the way joe rogan's another one he has a podcast called the joe rogan experience and he's got a lot of extreme political views or at least he debates extreme political views you know he loves mma he loves hunting he loves comedy and he just sits down with interesting people and has two or three hour random and ranty conversations he'll sometimes get stoned he'll sometimes get drunk um, and so again, Joe Rogan's taking all the stuff that happens in his day, hopefully not chucking out into his customers and his social media. He ignores all the, tra the trolling and the hating that he gets um, on social media and puts it through into his podcast. Now, you can hear in his podcast, he's having a bit of a go at the critics and trolls and haters because he's using the podcast as therapy. So your brand, your business, your enterprise, your startup, your passion, your profession, anything, instead of turning all that pain into spilling it out to the world and having a a detrimental effect, turn it into your brand. Excuse me, just belched <laughs> live on a podcast. It's my new hippie protein shake. My wife is like, she's getting me doing all these facial treatments. She's um, getting me to, she, we're having a yoga instructor that's coming to the house twice a week. We're doing yoga. She's making me hippie green. But you're going to see changes in this guy. I'm, you, know, you might start unsubscribing when my wife's got a hold of me. Anyway, so turn, turn all this pain into money, into brand, into reach, into serving and solving. This is what some of the best comedians do. They live all this pain. The irony is many comedians are in pain, but they live this pain and then they go and, you know, create a beautiful work from that. Uh, and I want to say, look, thank you. I'm really grateful to you. My, this podcast hopefully has helped you and these live feeds and these rants. But it's also my therapy. It's why I've been able to manage myself better in public now than I used to. Always learning, of course. Um, it's the best therapy you could ever have. Thank you. I'm really grateful to you. Uh, and remember, um, make sure you enjoy your life and what you do. Um, you know, we all want to make a bit more money. We all want to get ahead a bit. Um, but don't forget to enjoy the journey. I think very often as entrepreneurs, the curse is more, 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 not enough, not enough, not enough, not enough, hard work, hard work, hard work, hard work, hard work, hard work. Sometimes we don't breathe it in. So I'm going to breathe it in. Cheers. Here's my hippie green juice. Hmm. Breathe it in. And thank you. I love you. You're awesome. And remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything. This was possibly the weirdest take two podcast I've ever done. But everything's a test. <laughs>